Hi there. My name is Allegra Smith, and I'm an instructor and PhD student in the Department of English at Purdue. In this video, I'm going to teach you about how to use the Purdue Library Subject Guides, which are put together by our research librarians in English and writing to help you use the library resources to their full potential. Today we're going to be looking at the English 106 Library Subject Guide, but it's not just for students in freshman writing, it's for everyone. The English 106 Subject Guide is comprehensive and can help you with writing projects anywhere from introductory composition to business and technical and professional writing to your senior level research seminars in your own fields of study and majors. It's got lots of information on how to create a search strategy, find sources, look at specialized encyclopedias, and more. So without further ado, let's get started. There are many different ways to access the Purdue English 106 Library Subject Guide. You can go to guides.lib.purdue.edu slash English 106. There's probably a link to the library subject guide in your course Blackboard page if you're taking a writing course. For example, here in this business writing course, it's located down here. Click on it. It'll take you to the subject guide. Also, if you're on the Purdue Library homepage, you'll see here under the Discover bar, you can search for Guides by Subject. So there are 12 different subjects, and you'll find 106 under Arts and Humanities, or you can go back and look for Guides by Course and scroll all the way down until we find the English 106 subject guide. Now, once you've got to the subject guide, you'll see that there are a variety of tabs. They give you an introduction to the library and its resources, choosing a topic, creating a search strategy, everything from evaluating sources to looking at specialized resources. Today, we're gonna to think about starting out with a research project. So we'll look specifically at finding topic ideas and finding sources. If you go to the choosing a topic tab, you'll see a variety of links to help you find ideas for a paper or a project. I have two favorite resources here, Opposing, Viewpoint Con Opposing Viewpoints and Context and CQ Researcher. We'll start with Opposing Viewpoints and Context because I think it gives us the widest variety of information on an issue and also gives us a sense at a glance of what the conversation is on an issue. Opposing Viewpoints and Context is a database devoted primarily to editorials and opinion pieces, but it has a variety of other media available as well. You'll see here that their topics organized by broad subject area, or I can just browse issues alphabetically. There are lots of different subjects here. Everything from very broad areas like global warming and climate change to very specific ones like drilling in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge for oil. If I click on one of these, let's say, fossil fuels. I'll find first what they call featured viewpoints, which are selected opinion essays that the folks at Gale opposing viewpoints and context believe best represent the conversation or debate on an issue. There are also results from scholarly journal articles, reference like encyclopedias, additional viewpoints, images, videos, podcasts, clips from radio shows on NPR, statistics and data sets, and other sites that you can take a look at. There are many types of sources here, which can range from very broad to very narrow. This can help provide depth of perspective for an issue for you. While opposing viewpoints and context is really helpful if you have no idea what you want to research, CQ Researcher can help you to get more specialized in an area and can help you deepen your understanding if you have a general sense of where you want to go, 
but not of the argument you want to make. CQ Researcher provides in-depth reports compiled by professional researchers for politicians. CQ actually stands for Congressional Quarterly. So these are the briefings that your legislators might read to get up to date on an issue. These are organized chronologically, offer lots of charts and graphs, and link out to legitimate sources that you can cite in your work. So I might click Browse Topics here. And they're, like in uh, Opposing Viewpoints, sorted by general subject area. So let's say that I'm interested in science and technology. We have subtopics here, maybe computers and the internet. You'll see that there are reports dating all the way back to 1993. Some of them are shorter, some of them are more in depth. If I wanna learn about cybersecurity, this is what they call a short report. You see it spans 38 different references. If I find a more in-depth one, like the fight over net neutrality, it's extremely long and contains timelines, pictures, infographics, data sets, all sorts of stuff that I can use to learn more about my topic. Here's a point counterpoint about regulation and access to information on the internet. The great thing about CQ is that it's an authoritative source. It cites the different sources that it uses to make claims, and you can follow those claims directly back to where they came from. Also, it's easy to cite it at the click of a button. So now that you have a sense of the topic that you want to pursue, it's time to think about how to find sources. So if we go to the Finding Articles tab here on our library database, we can find one resource that helps us to start whittling down our search strategy, and that's Academic Search Premier, located under the Meter Databases tab here on the left. Academic Search Premier is also sometimes known as EBSCOhost, which is the name of the company that hosts it. If you go to Advanced Search, Academic Search Premier will provide you with a different searching experience than is typical on, say, a search engine like Google. You have three different search boxes instead of one. This helps you to get more specific in the content you gather. Academic Search Premier primarily gives articles from scholarly journals, as well as some periodicals, newspapers, and magazines. So for example, I might be interested in researching different generations. So I'll type in millennial. Academic Search Premier is giving me over 8,000 search results here. Now, make sure that you go deep into the second or third page of results since there are only 10 articles per page. But this can still be difficult to navigate with nearly 9,000 results. So I'm going to narrow my search here by thinking about millennials and politics. Now this has narrowed my search results to 345, a little bit easier to navigate but I can go even more targeted if I add another search term, say social media. Now there are 19 search results, a lot easier to navigate and a lot easier to get through. You can click on an article, let's see, young voters, can White House hopefuls win over millennials? And if it's not available, you can click find it at Purdue Libraries to access it. You'll wanna sign in for your options. Now that you understand how to use Academic Search Premier, it's time to look at the library's OneSearch which is available on the homepage at lib.purdue.edu and will help you look through all of the library's collections of resources. So let's say again that we're looking for millennials and politics. 
there are lots of results, and so we're going to want to filter them, perhaps by the type of result that we're looking for. Let's say that your professor has told you that you need to include at least four peer-reviewed articles. You can select articles to solely look for peer-reviewed scholarly journal articles for your research project. You can also filter by date or by author. If you want to find records from the last month or the last three months, you can click that. Say we want to find things from the last 10 years. That's narrowed our search results considerably. As you get more specialized in your research, you might want to consider using some of the library's databases. The library databases are available on the home page if you hover over Find and click Databases. There are 625 databases currently available through the library as of the time that I make this video in July 2019, and they're adding databases all the time. You'll likely want to search by subject. So if I'm looking for technology resources, I'll click engineering and technology. And you can find databases specific to what you're looking for for your particular project. You can also search using the search field at the top. There are lots of cool databases here that you might not even be aware of. I just want to highlight one in particular here. If I go back to the A to Z list of databases, we have, for example, Canopy, which you can navigate to at purdue.canopy.com. Canopy is like Netflix for documentaries, and you have access to thousands of films for free with your Purdue tuition dollars. So check out the databases sometime and see what's relevant to your research interests. As you're searching for articles or other sources for your research, you might also consider using advanced search terms like Boolean operators, such as and, or, or not. You might also consider other search techniques, like combining searches, using wildcards, and looking for hashtags. Google has a particularly helpful resource for refining web searches that I will link with this video. One final resource that you can look at is Google Scholar, which can help you find some articles or resources that aren't available in the library's databases. You can go to scholar.google.com to navigate to it. Let's say again that I'm looking for millennials in politics. One of the great features of Google Scholar is its citation count. Citation is how you know that a research paper or other scholarly source is generating buzz, and often that it's reputable. If something's been cited by 126 people, it's being talked about a lot, and it's likely a valid and legitimate source. You can click the citations to see who's citing it and use this to gather additional sources. I hope that this video has been helpful for you as you think about finding a research topic and creating a search strategy for conducting research and writing courses at Purdue. If you need any additional help, the Purdue Writing Lab and the Purdue OWL both have resources available to you. You can schedule an appointment at the Writing Lab to meet with a tutor to talk about your specific needs. Happy researching!